The first uh, speaker is going to be Scott Ulrich. Scott is uh, the Director of Research in the Human Performance Lab here at Stanford, and he's going to speak briefly about OpenCAP, which is what Scott already mentioned, so it's a thing that people at Stanford are very excited about. And Scott, what is it about? <laughs> okay, thanks, Ellen. So measures of human motion and the musculoskeletal forces that underlie it are critical for understanding performance and preventing diseases. Unfortunately, these quantities are rarely measured in practice because it requires an expensive motion capture laboratory and time-intensive analysis by an expert. To solve this problem, we developed OpenCAP, which is a freely available web-based tool that estimates musculoskeletal forces using two smartphones. OpenCAP combines computer vision, deep learning, and biomechanical models to estimate motion from video. But it goes deeper than motion and estimates musculoskeletal forces using physics-based simulations. An OpenCAP data collection only takes 10 minutes, which makes it about 25 times faster and over 200 times cheaper than the in-lab approach. And this enables large-scale studies like prospective injury risk studies that were previously not feasible. It also provides clinicians and coaches with in-depth measures of performance that can improve training and treatment. OpenCAP has been adopted by 1,300 people worldwide in the seven months since we've released it. I'd invite you to come over to our demo number one during the lunch hour in the corner there to try it out. Thanks. Great. Okay, the second quick glimpse is going to be Reed Gertig, and Reed is a postdoc in the um, human performance, and he's part of the digital athlete moonshot, and we'll hear from him um, for about a minute. <laughs> Good, good. Uh, yeah, thanks. So I've been studying hamstring strain injuries, which are a big problem for many athletes. It was shown recently that these injuries occur often when athletes are accelerating, not running at a constant speed. And we wanted to know why. So we took videos of people using iPhones while they ran at a constant speed and while they accelerated. We processed them in open cap, and then we compared the hamstring kinematics between the two tasks. This figure here illustrates one of our key results. It shows that the peak hamstring length is not much different at top speed, where the lines intersect, but below about 80% of top speed, the hamstrings are stretched significantly more during acceleration. And this has implications for how we monitor athletes. Uh, for when we try to understand when they're exposed to high-risk circumstance, we need to consider running speed in addition to acceleration, which isn't always done. So come check out my poster, number 31. Be happy to discuss these results and more and discuss the implications for monitoring athletes and injury mechanisms. Thanks.